Hello and welcome to another episode of the Custom Apparel Startups Podcast. My name is Mark Vila and today we're here to talk about the best t-shirt, right? And when you're looking to start or grow your custom apparel business, there's a ton of challenges out there, you know, picking the right equipment, what are you going to sell to your customers? And we deal with a lot of phone calls here, forums that we work with, uh, Facebook groups that we run. And almost every day, somebody is asking, what's the best technology? What's the best t-shirt? What should I start making? And we're going to kind of talk about how that question is is a bad question to ask the concept of the best technology or the best is is a fallacy and that's why we've brought in mike putnam he's been in the customization slash apparel industry for over 30 years so uh mike welcome and why don't you tell us kind of a a a minute on where you started and how you ended up here at at coldesi uh working with uh selling some of the latest technology and t-shirt printing uh sure Uh, my name is mike putnam um, I started within the industry, geez, in 1990s or 1986, printing T-shirts uh, over the summer for a local screen printer, Manatee Apparel. Uh, so two summers of screen printing, um, followed by working at a wholesale distributor, Goodbye Sportswear, in 1990 while I was going to college. I was started picking orders, and by the time I got into sales, um, I was making more as working in sales than as an x-ray tech, so I went to apparel. Uh, Goodbye was bought in 99 by Alpha, Alpha bought by Alpha Broder. Uh, I left right around that time to go to uh, TSC Apparel, mm-hmm. who is, um, was Toltex uh, as well, and they're now owned by s and Activewear. Uh, But then went to TSF Apparel, Heritage Sportswear, Delta Apparel, uh, which led me to Coldesi. Yeah. So, so what the so that is why when I thought of what's the best shirt or what's the best technology for printing on a shirt, I thought about you because you've been through, you know, you were on the floor Mm -hmm. printing shirts to start irregulars i started in irregulars for nine years i sold irregulars and closeouts it was the underbelly of the market so you had to learn why it was an irregular what you know within the fabric what you know um before slub was a slub was an accidental um and invention yeah Uh, tell me about slub what is that uh, so slub within the fabric it's designed to have a larger piece within the fabric to simulate like a burnout print okay Um, and it gives the fabric texture um without necessarily the holes of it um so it's uh, just a different fashion and print Mm -hmm. it's almost like a destroyed cap Okay. Uh, those were an accident. Uh, someone had a destroyed cap within the process and said, I like that cap. So they started making them destroyed. Yeah. Accident. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, so there's a whole, I think that there's probably a whole podcast we could do just on those concepts. Like the, what are the different terms people should know and what's the history of them. But today we're going to focus on kind of what helping folks at the beginning of the understanding of picking the right shirt to either match your technology or picking the right technology to match your shirt. Mm -hmm. And it's, and the reason why we would say like, what's the best t-shirt or what's the best best technology is a fallacy is it really depends on um, so many things, right? So if we ask what's the best t-shirt maybe you could say like why is the concept of what's the best t-shirt for decorating or for customizing why is that a bad question to ask it all comes down to uh well one personal preference not all comes down to but personal preference preference has a lot to play in that and also the process Uh, you typically start in your closet with what is your favorite shirt as far as what the best but as far as the best the concept of best you want the best platform for your print to rest on so you get the longest wear out of that said print. Mm-hmm. Um, shirts have a play in that. If the fibers stand up, they stand up within the print. It dulls the print. Um, if 
you know, the the knit is uh, if it's a burnout, you have to print it differently. Or if it's a polyester, you have to print it differently. Mm -hmm. It just depends, again, on your process and personal preference. Right. So so I would say like for using two real world examples, if your market is doing um, fishing, surfing, you know, beach wear, all of that. Right. That's typically going to be people are going to want um UPF shirts. It's going to be big. Right. It's going to be a 30, a 40, a 50. And, and what do those mean? Technically, all shirts are UPF. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why you have a farmer's stand. Right. Okay. There's some right. varying difference of blocking within that process. So, so your customer might, that your customer, if that's your customer, might want more blocking because they don't Correct. want to get sunburned. Sun related. They might want long sleeve. Even though it's outdoor hot, they want long sleeve. They also want it a little bit lightweight. They want it to dry quickly. So that is a very different shirt than say, if you're selling rock band concert. Tees. Truly. It's the Tr opposite shirt. Tr completely. <laughs> and, um, and then in addition to that, um, the technology you're gonna print on needs to be much different, I would say, right? Oh, certainly. certainly. So in those two examples, um, if you're, uh, I'll try to be as specific as possible so you can give a real world example, just to kind of explain why that concept is so one business you sell stuff for the beach and fishing so mm -hmm. everything is for on a boat fishing rod in your hand or on the beach with your kids and then the other business is you sell to a small rock band type of a venue so they it's a venue that they have small bands come in probably never more than 100 or 200 people in the building and they want to have merch that they can sell every single time one of these bands comes through. Merch is king. What, so, right? So what technologies, what would you say about the difference in those technologies for printing? What would you print with? And what type of shirt would you use? Oh, certainly. Uh, so on the fishing market, you're with polyesters, you're either going to be sublimating those fabrics with light colors. It's going to be a white, uh, you know, uh, pastel yellow, blue, green, silver, uh, something within those markets that uh, that sublimation print can go on. Uh, sublimation is an outgassing of um, of the ink, basically that let's say stains a shirt or redyes the shirt. It becomes part of the fabric mm -hmm. uh, within that. So sublimation or some type of light, you know, typically you would see a screen print within that process, uh, something that's going to withstand um, the elements. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, on the rock band side, you're looking for more of an intricate print typically. A lot of times it's a one color. Um, you're not getting a lot of buildup within those shirts. A lot of times you see um, burnout shirts, you see the specialty prints within those. Okay. Um, so you'll see some, um, basically you're not looking for buildup. You want a no hand, a water-based feel. Or it's just a single print where it's a soft hand feel, um, something where you're getting, you know, the cheaper side of you're looking for a higher volume. All right. And and you may be talking about um, cotton. Correct. Right. Typically, it's a cotton shirt. In, in rock band style, it's typically either a cotton shirt. But times have changed. I mean, the introduction of, um, you know, CVC fabric, which is mm -hmm. chief value cotton. You'll see uh, some type of blend, a 60-40, a mm -hmm. 75, you know, some type of blend within the fabric. Um, and then try blends. Um, those are a little higher price, but um, with smaller venues, they're typically more minded on, I want that person to wear the shirt all the time, not necessarily get a shirt just because it's Aerosmith and mm -hmm. you know, I gotta have it on whatever shirt it, it, it's on. Typically people buy shirts based on what's printed on them uh, because they love the print and then they wear it more because they love the shirt. Right, a great point. So, and on that, you're probably looking at dark colors too, right? Historically. So, historically, right? And and um, so- it, Black would be the most prominent. Black and would that's be the most prominent, right? For concerts, black and white. Black. You, have a, you have a stash of black and white and you can print practically anything. Mm -hmm. With those venues, the smaller the venue, it's more about on demand. Uh, those change on a weekly basis. You're mm -hmm. not going to typically have reaction time to set up. I mean, most bands have merch that they um, merch 
people or that are selling that already or creating that already. It's mm -hmm. in place. Um, but name dropped with venue is important typically. Right, right. And and then I guess less about the actual business structure because that mm -hmm. probably is true, but more so maybe it, more so kind of the concept of what the print is. So in, in this example and the reason why it's so it's juxtaposed is for the you know, small venue rock type of stuff, even if these bands don't travel, like they're only local, mm -hmm. they, you know. Um, or control their own merch nowadays. Yeah. So you're controlling your own merch and, you know, your, you know, your music is organic, the same yeah. with your with your merch. And, and that merch for those may be um, direct to garment printed, Truly. for the soft hand, for the small runs, um, for the ability to do intricate artwork, mm -hmm. um, the ability to do something digital, maybe with a lot of colors. They want to do something with, you know, um, just, you know, like just a rock rabbit playing a crazy color guitar. Or sometimes you know? just an in the garage <laughs> simplistic discharge where it's yeah. a single pass on a screen and then it's a cure process mm -hmm. within and that's controllable by an individual. So you're saying, uh, so we may be looking at... Um, screen printing or direct to garment printing on the one yes. and on the other side we would be looking at say sublimation um, so sublimating on light colored polyesters that are lightweight moisture wicking high UPF and the other side typically is, tropical colors tropical colors and the, on the other side we're looking at dark direct to garment or screen printing or vinyl or even heat transfer vinyl yes. um, and and that's kind of the uh, d a good definition of that so of, of why it's so different. So if someone comes in and says, hey, I'm starting a t-shirt business, what's the best t-shirt I should have? There, there was a lot of things we unpacked with two very, very specific examples that created two, that not only was the technology different, but the t-shirt was different too. It's part of why I love this industry. There's so many pockets of what can drive a business. So as a salesperson, you would build, you know, the, concert, you know, venue time, um, World Series and sports uh, um, uh, playoff time. Mm -hmm. So you would just build that through the year and find those customers that tailored to that particular market. Yeah. And so and this is also something that I love about this industry, too, is that there's the idea of what's the best. And when I think about what's the best, I Good, better, best. Good, you always yeah, there's the good, there's, that's Give definitely me a good, a, better, best. That's definitely a great marketing subjective. tool. Subjective. And, and, and very subjective. And I find that it's so specific everywhere. So if you, one example I thought of was like, I've been watching um, Chef's Table. Have you seen this show, mm -hmm. Chef's Table? Yeah. So they, what, they are like hardcore into the ingredients, right? The chefs, they know how to cook. They've got great recipes. They know how to plate up a design so it looks so cool. It's like art on a plate. But tiny food. They will spend. They will like. They will travel across the world to find the right flavor of mint true. that they're trying it's to true. hit. The truffle, like the, the truffle, for instance. Yeah, like the and 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 the right type, you know, and the right style and and the right notes, and it's so specific. So. The ingredient, you know, is much like the T-shirt, mm. right? It's that that there is no best, and um, it can change the outcome, and it changes the outcome, right? Exactly. So, if you were to use um, a great example of that, actually, kind of going into cooking, would be um, sugar, right? So, uh -huh. sugar and cookies, right? So, if you have refined white sugar, and then you on the other side of the spectrum, you maybe you say you would have a dark brown sugar. Right, the amount of I believe molasses in that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is different. Now sure. they're both sugar. Yep, they both are made from cane. Mm -hmm. They're both very sweet. You cannot say which one is better for a cookie. And sometimes you're mixing both of and them. Sometimes at the same you're time. mixing both of them together, right? Um, and uh, and but it changes the outcome because a dark brown is going to create probably a much chewier cookie. And if you eliminate brown sugar and just use white, it's probably going to be a much drier, more cake type of a cookie. And the same is with this t-shirt market too. Um, the the more of a certain material you have in there, the type of dye that's used is going to effectively outcome. Now, oh, it, I, it can even affect the outcome of how something's pressed after the fact. Right, and that, and that's what I wanted to ask about. So you work a lot in direct to film printing and and helping folks you know start and grow their businesses with direct to film printers. Now, 
Um, what are some things that have to do with t-shirts? Uh, I'll, I'll be very broad so you can go with it, but t-shirts, dyes, coloring, how does that affect how somebody might choose the right apparel for direct-to-film printing? Every print that you make is really a test. You, you want to test your fabrics regardless. And especially with some of the newer tech, with transfers, you may have something called a hot peel, uh, but not all fabrics hot peel. Uh, you could have a forest green and, and the same shirt and the black in the same shirt, and the forest green won't hot peel and the black will hot peel. And why, why is that? Some of that's within the uh, the acidity of the dye or the tight, you know, the, within the manufacturing process, typically, the dye is preventing it from, um, you know, it's uh, either biting or it's not releasing one way or the other. Sometimes with acidity or pH within the process, um, I've had sweatshirts that you could literally hold the sweatshirt and put your hand right through the fabric fabric because within the process the pH was off uh, and those were highly decorated we had to credit back uh, it was um, a, a large Hooters order 9,000 mm -hmm. shirts of just the pH was off within the process right you don't know it in, until it's you know post decoration right and and this is something that I think that is is um, under under on uh, understudied and underappreciated on how these are so different and i will see uh especially folks new to the industry get so frustrated on why won't this transfer stick oh. to this shirt why is it peeling up i've wasted a hundred bucks in paper my customer is upset and as you mentioned you know almost every transfer is a test and it's the dye makes a difference the i mean and it's not even just not all cotton's cotton and not well, all some, some processes are also more forgiving than the other okay okay um, good w within some have a you know it, it's um what do you think might be something that's very forgiving and something that's going to be a lot less forgiving as far as processes go um dtg and needing cotton shirts okay much more forgiving that's more about the platform and you can control that within your process even if you used a um a, 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 an entry level, you know, a basic shirt, you can still, you know, put the pre-treat on and press it to give it a, a surface mm -hmm. of printing to improve that print over mm -hmm. time. Um, and what's, what's a technology that you might find be, or, or, or a concept that is going to be le very much less forgiving, what, um, where you imagine a customer would have to test a lot more? Um, I would say it, it would come in between the um, the DFX process is a, you know, it's a time and temp. So white toner printing. White toner printing. Mm -hmm. If you adhere to the process, mm -hmm. it is much easier within the process. Uh, but it's, again, it's a time and temp. Uh, if you're... You know, you're combating a uh, platen on a pallet. If you're not taking an infrared gun and shooting your, you know, platen, mm -hmm. you could be off somewhere. The pressure could be off. There's mm -hmm. just um, having the right equipment in those cases is paramount to the process. Right. Okay. So, and, and I actually would, so you gave two examples and what I see about two examples or some, those two examples are something I've talked about in the past, um, which is, um, I think I consider there's like, um, there's chemically decorating things. There yes. is um, there is is decorating decorating things through adhesion mm -hmm. and de decorating things mechanically. Those mm -hmm. are the mm -hmm. three ways I personally define decorating things. So when you're decorating things with um, DTG, for example, I'd probably describe this as more of a chemical decoration um, and and maybe a little bit mechanical. Some bonding. Yeah, a little bit mechanical, right? You're putting down pre-treat, which is soaking into the apparel. Mm -hmm. You're putting down ink, which is reacting with the pre-treat and kind of uh, uh, congealing, or I don't know the right word, but it's like biting together. And it's kind of like the fabric and the and the ink are are, are bite into each other, like spilling um, you know, like glue on a carpet. Mm -hmm. Like you're not just going to get it out. 
It's, it's a it's, no hand feel that's part of the garment. Yeah. And that's what you're looking for with that process. And, and um, so there's a degree of forgiveness in that because the because you're kind of putting shoving things into the shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, same similar with sublimation. Now, um, did white toner similar to heat transfer vinyl? Is an is is an adhesion Polymer. process. Yep. It's it's glue. sits on top of. Yeah, sits on top of. It's like glue. Mm -hmm. So um, so you've got in so many words glue or, or adhesion uh, that and heat transfer vinyl is the same. That is solid at room temperature. You get it hot. It softens. It grabs onto the shirt. And then when it cools down, it hardens again. Mm -hmm. And not completely hard, but it becomes more solid again. Yep. And then it now gripped onto the shirt. Yep. The acidity in the dye, the way the weave of the shirt is, um, how the fabric the, content, the fabric uh, content. sixty forty, a tri blend, or how how it holds heat within the process, mm -hmm. right? All affect that differently. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so and as something that you're going to adhere to. I remember the one of the early on, I was messing with. Um, uh, heat transfer vinyl because we were testing our Triton vinyl. So I was just putting it on everything. I was just, how does it work? How does I it look? I love single color white heat transfer vinyl. I, I can't tell you how many logo shirts I go through. Yeah, and they, they're just great, right? Well, I, I got some basketball shorts and it wouldn't stick at all. Mm -hmm. Like, not at all. I couldn't, it was like as if the glue didn't exist. And I tried all different colors vinyl. Eventually, I got to a gold vinyl that stuck to it. All right, so I t talk to the manufacturer, and I'm talking to this, and then it ends up that there was a, a high degree of acrylic, ah. right? Oh, okay, and the, okay, yep. and the acrylic material in there did, was not compatible with adhesives because it was designed to resist staining and um, uh, uh, bacteria, all these things. So it had all of this stuff designed to resist anything sticking to it. Which is why the glue wouldn't stick to it in so many words, right? Um, however, the manufacturer said that the gold, in order to achieve the gold reflectiveness, oh, oh. they used a completely different adhesive than every... And then I think gold, silver, and another one, I think... The metallics. Right, yeah, the metallics were a completely different adhesive. That adhesive was not susceptible to the blocking characteristics of that short. If you're brand new to the industry, how frustrated are you? But it's 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 just it's that's the point of the testing and understanding all this stuff. And poly inherently, poly has to be treated to be moisture wicking. Poly is aquaphobic; it repels water. Mm -hmm. You have to treat it for it to be moisture wicking. Yeah, yeah. So and then now that we're talking about treating, we're talking about uh, chemicals, heat, uh, physical treating. Sometimes they take these. Um, these uh, or the wash cycle, the pull, enzyme yeah. wash, or enzyme wash. Okay. you know, there's many washes within. You can have a you know the garment dye process or the type of water that they're using within. There could there's so many variables that are the outcome of a t-shirt that have bearing on mm -hmm. what you're printing or how you're printing it or delivering it or shipping it. Yeah, and, and uh, if you know, there's another thing about like runs and batches too, right? Because if if you've ever if you've remodeled your house oh, yeah. <laughs> or if you've painted, right, you know that um, my neighbor just mentioned this to me. He goes, oh, he goes, if that Sherwin-Williams paint you're going to buy, he goes, I don't recommend going to a different store. Go to the same store because every machine could be slightly calibrated wow. different and your That's tint great. will be a little bit off. So he said, if you're going, if you think you're going to run out, go to the same store and mix those a little bit Thank together. Thank you. I'm, I'm getting ready to paint my house <laughs> and I have my old paint. Yeah, that's what he said because he, he said that can slightly different. And if you just go from one to the other, you'll notice. And the same thing if you order tile or carpet. That I've seen. The, the, it, it will change. Within sizes, I see that. You know, like sometimes sizes. you get your shirts and you have a full size run, you know, kids all the way up. But you may have four or five different colors to contend with. Yes. And, and you may have where the mediums react differently. Oh, yes. And Even after being heated. Yeah. And why? Well, because the the all of these were made in a factory. And then in this place in the world where the cotton comes from, there was a typhoon. So that prevented cotton production from paused in that area. So they had to get the cotton from a different area of the world, which is still a cotton plant. But we know the diversification, the diversity of animals and plants on Earth. That cotton is slightly different in characteristics. 
it didn't accept the dye the same way. So they had to increase, I don't know what, what do I know about dyes, but the pH or the acidity it's in the science. dye. It's a science. It's a direct science. Yeah. Now they, sure. they got the color to match, but it's, but now on a chemical level, that shirt is slightly different. And then you throw pre-treat on it and it comes out different. So I think that really the moral of the story with all of this is, um, and, and we should definitely have another podcast just to talk deeper into this stuff. But the moral of the story is for picking the best shirt um, so far when we'll cover a couple more things. But one is, um, you know, you have to know your, your preference, your customer's preference, um, what your market wants and the technology you're using and making sure it works together. And then the second moral is, is, is that you've got to test all this stuff. Um, if you've not worked with something before, or oh, truly. A, yeah, order extras, test it first. At least one extra. Yeah, show it to your customer. Um, and sometimes that, that can simply be a suggestion piece of you tested something. They had a large logo. You put it to a pocket print, and you threw it on a shirt to test it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and keep uh, extra shirts that you have to test again later. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Or if something happens to that shirt after the fact, so you mm -hmm. have a shirt that you can wash it and see if it really does that. I, right. I, I printed them. Let's wash mine and see yeah, if it does the same thing. Yeah, see if you can replicate thing. issues. Uh, and, then, and then further, um, helping once when you do that, you can help educate your customer why. So they say, I want this green or this red. And then you have to explain, well, okay, if we're doing red, red has a particular property where that the dye in the shirt can come through through technology. No matter what technology I use, there's there's going to be a degree where it actually dye changes. Migration. Right? A fabled dye migration. Dye migration. And and that, you know, there's plenty of technologies that have blocking parameters, mm -hmm. but even still um, over time, you know, that dye just does not, wants to change things. It wants to move free. <laughs> you heat up uh, past 330 degrees and the dyes will reactivate. You, the dyes will reactivate and, and for a certain color. It could go through like a dryer, uh, uh, an industrial dryer that gets above a certain damp mm -hmm. and it can come out pink. Where it messes up. So, so you might want to educate your customer if you know and you know because you've tested Right. Mm -hmm. So you said this customer wants red. Let me see what happens. So you order some, you get it done, and maybe you don't order the full amount yet. Or you've done plenty of testing ahead of time where you've got that shirt in the back room ready to test again. And you grab a, a square of that shirt and you put your customer's logo on it. It looks great. Fine. Um, another scenario is it doesn't look great. You realize, hey, I'm already seeing some issues with this, with the mm -hmm. technology that I use. And you go to your customer and you just say, hey, I've got a couple ideas for you. The white in your logo, let's change it to black. Or let's not do the red shirt. Let's do a black shirt or Absolutely. a white shirt. And you explain to them why. And they may say, um, that didn't happen before. That wasn't this. And then you just have to explain every scenario is different. You know, the technology I print with, the type of shirt you want. Those shirts you're showing me before were printed in the 90s. I can't tell you what dye or shirt that was. That material doesn't even exist in this world anymore. That's why. You know. Um, also, uh, okay, well, before when your business was huge and you printed them in the 90s, you were printing a 1,000 at a time at a screen print shop, and they were doing something specific to make that work. Now your business is much different. You have a ton of virtual employees, so you only want 30 shirts. I'm going to be printing those with white toner print technology mm -hmm. for a short run because nobody's going to want, you're not going to want to pay the screen print price for that anywhere because no, the setup set charges. Expenses. Correct. So, yeah. so because of that, we have to make a change. So you've got to educate your customer. Um, so uh, we have like five more minutes I'd like to discuss. And I think we, I think this would just be a fun exercise to just kind of put you on the spot. <laughs> sure. I'm going to name some technologies and then because what somebody is going to be curious about listening to this podcast is this this very well is going to be their intro to the industry. Mm -hmm. This maybe they Googled and they found us, right? And they're learning. Um, and other folks are in the industry and maybe they do vinyl now or they do embroidery and they want to know, like, what am I going to do next? Um, 
And then you have folks who have maybe been in the industry for a long time and, and they know everything. They know more than us. Oh, okay. But they're trying to... I'm always learning. Yeah, always. Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, so, and they're, that's why they're listening is they're always learning. And they said, okay, well, here's other people who've been in the industry for a long time. So this is kind of an in your opinion thing. But I want to name some technologies and maybe you can name some industries that that would be or some properties on why somebody would want to choose that technology. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, um, I would say, you know, sublimation, you'd say, you know, great for fit, great for the fishing and outdoor apparel. So, um, we'll start off at like probably the oldest and most popular in screen printing. So what, what business might be good to choose to go that way versus something else? Uh, uh, high volume, high output, um, Something where it's the same print, a lot of reps. Okay. Okay. So same, same print, a lot of reps. Um, and I would say like low color counts too. You don't... Oh, truly. Right? You truly. Don't... It's a very basic prints. You typically... Um, you have to get a specialty printer for a uh, four color process to make a photo realistic. It's okay. just a, it's harder to uh, register screens uh, when you find people that do that. I mean, hold on to those screen printers. They're, they're valuable. It's a dying breed. It's hard to, uh, it's a hard technology technology to teach and then maintain employees. And master and master. And, and then kind of, Backing up on that one would be direct to film because that mm -hmm. is very much becoming, um, uh, uh, it's very accepted in this in screen printing and becoming more and more because of the Truly. high production. So, what are some positive benefits of direct to film? That's that on demand business, um, something where you don't have to carry inventory or you're doing a lot of name drops um, or you're you know pressing on poly or don't have an idea of what substrates or, or fabrics you're going to be printing on. Mm -hmm. It's just a little more versatile, a little so, more forgiving. A little, and you can do high volume and Truly. you can do digital. So Only as do... fast as how how fast you can press. Okay. And teaching a uh, teaching someone how to heat press is different than teaching someone how to screen print. Right. Significantly easier. Significantly. <laughs> yeah. Like like a morning versus a month. True. True. <laughs> um, now, uh, okay. So direct to film is, it's, it's great for full digital. It's great for uh, variable data, um, meaning like name drops or mm -hmm. something like that. Names and numbers without, um, it goes after the vinyl industry without uh, needing to weed. Okay. Um, you can pretty much set your prints up, run the prints. Um, you can nest it or not nest it just depending on. Um, the larger format gets you into just a higher output. So, so both both of the technologies mentioned so far, um, doing a decent amount of production. You're not <clears throat> going to do one offs on those typically. Um, so now we can kind of talk about like one off. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got white toner printing mm -hmm. technology. Very versatile. Okay, uh, is uh, for me white toner. It's um, like having a club in the bag. You're not going to go, you know, into the beach with your driver. Mm -hmm. You need something that's just a little more versatile. If I'm doing a lot of hard goods, I, I have to have a white toner for that on-demand aspect. And for those one-off shirts, it's a very quick process. Or if I'm not in the office um, and I need something that's little to no maintenance, that white toner printer is, you know, it's a versatile tool. So, so white toner is um, a versatility, short, medium run, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it doesn't need to be operated or maintained. Correct. So you can, yeah, you could do something where you're not. And the, the footprint the overall is, uh, it's very, very accommodating small. to an office uh, with a heat press and um, and the printer. You're, you know, you... yeah, I mean, like a basic size. Um, table mm -hmm. that, like any basic almost literally any basic size table outside of a bistro table can handle that whole setup oh true right you know true which is not the same as, as the other technology we mentioned now um a dtg let's talk about that one for a minute what what are strengths and on that kind of i love the one-off capabilities of dtgs mm -hmm. um if you're a fan of a no hand feel, you want something as close to water base, uh, no hand, no build up on, that's the strong suit of, you get some beautiful photorealistic prints. Um, it is a 
one-off market. It's look, it's 100% cotton, but typically those people are very um, um, eco-friendly. So cotton has a great appeal. Mm -hmm. um, polyester for a long time had a stigmatism about it as far as, you know, it's manufactured or synthetic. Right, uh, right. I mean, it's like, I think it's, I mean, it's a petroleum base it product? is it okay. is so yeah. that's where the natural fibers of 100 percent cotton and, and bamboo too you can and do when with when dtg DT yes okay. yeah when dtg was born it was kind of born out of that eco anti-poly world yeah yeah because it's it's you're using a very little amount of ink yes you there's the waste is very little compared to it's a creative technology yeah. if you're passionate about what you're putting on and it's a wonderful technology so, for creation so I, I just just like super premium print mm -hmm. very soft tons of colors mm -hmm. and you can achieve like the most beautiful print on a t-shirt period you want something feathered in without yeah. the hand you want it to wash that's where you're gonna get yeah great great and then the last one is um sublimation which mm -hmm. actually we kind of covered so i can kind of go through that quick but we talked about you know sublimation being you know zero hand or feel um it, it versatility is another one with that because you can do the mugs and coasters and oh. mouse pads and shirts. And Love the hard right. good aspect. And the entry level of sublimation the is the, appear, uh, the appeal there. So you can have a very nice printer, entry level, you know, under three grand and easily have printable product and running the market. Yeah. So for, for a couple thousand dollars on on uh, sublimation, mm -hmm. you have something that can create the most Premium and that's the high end. My, my number was a high end. Yeah. You, you can go low end. That's just to maximize the print uh, simply from, but you can go, it, it's the easiest technology probably to get into outside of a vinyl. Vinyl will probably be my mm -hmm. other, um, you know, that, and that's a viable, you know, industry in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, having a cutter and being able to put, you know, vinyl creatively multicolor prints. It can get you up and running to the point that you grow your business. Yeah, no, it's it's great. So, um, and vinyl was another one. I didn't even put that on the list. I should have, but yeah, I mean that's that's another one great for versatility and and for uh, e ease to entry. So, um, well, we've covered a lot of stuff on this podcast today, and and there's a lot more to talk about. And and Michael definitely be back on again um, because there's so much more to be had about this conversation. But I think the next step is you. Hopefully you realize that there's a lot to learn. And if you're getting frustrated in decorating, you realize that there it's more complex than just cotton or poly or white or black. And if you've got questions about um, what's the best technology, what's the best shirt, all of that, go to coldessi.com. You can live chat with one of our pros. You may very well um, get uh, Mike on the phone if you're going to talk about DTF a lot, right? That's a lot True. of the conversations you're having today. Um, so expert on that and, and all the other technologies and we'll help to guide you through it. So if you're not sure where to go next or you're frustrated with technology that you're using and you're trying to figure out why, you can talk to us at Coldesi and the folks here will help to explain the reason why you're getting failure on this, the reason why the person you outsource to who has a DTG printer can't provide you those fishing shirts is because the technology doesn't do it and that education might help you realize that getting a sublimation system yourself is the next move. True. So uh, thank you again. Uh, we're going to wrap up today and look forward to the next episode of Custom Apparel Startups with Mike Putnam coming soon. There's so much we got to talk about, oh, man. Can of worms. There's, there's so we much, so I can't open wait. The, open the can of worms. <laughs> and thanks for joining us, everybody out there. Thanks for listening, and have a good business.